This is Rosanna. I'm one of the educators of the Champions uh, Champions U calls. And um, we have these calls every single Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. We have them in European time as well. So in the morning, for us, it's 1 p.m. Eastern time that we have the European calls, uh, 7 p.m. for North Americans or whoever wants to join on these calls. And the, the purpose of them, of course, is to share some basic knowledge, value, and give more insight on the different markets. Of course, we have Forex that's covered a lot on these calls, crypto as well. Generally, I'm the one that covers the crypto side the most. Uh, Christian Edwin will cover a bit of everything, mainly Forex, from what I've seen. And those of you that are on these calls every week that I've been seeing on these calls every week, you know, we always have high standards with these calls. And, you know, we're very very strong um, on the iGenius products. And of course, don't just depend on the university calls to learn. If you are not going through your university, the market pro, you're already making a big mistake because those are the key resources that you need to leverage in order to really get a better understanding. Uh, I know there's a few people that maybe rather just hop on these calls and think that's good enough. It's not. Market Pro Champions, uh, I mean, the <laughs> university on the back office iGenius is what you really need to focus on first. Okay, so let's play a video um, of, it's a very short video, but I kind of want to use this to set the tone and also ask some questions and go into a few things myself. Uh, bear with me. You know why? Whenever I try to do this, it gives me. It likes to be rude with me. This whole share screen thing. Sometimes it's on my side. Sometimes it's not. While I figure this out, um, who here has investments in stocks? Like who is invested in stocks? Yep. Accidentally, <laughs> how did you accidentally invest in stocks? Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna play this video, three minutes, super short, but to set the tone, because I wanna go over some things with you and if you have any questions as well. Apple's up more than 6% right now, Google about 3%, but Dell, Intel, Research Motion, and Microsoft are all to the upside. Look how strong. Did not disappoint. 400 points higher. Yes, indeed. The market's roar higher. Last 30 minutes of trading as volatility once again rules the day. Most of the techs this morning, if not all of them, have just exploded to the. Down 1.7% here, a loss of 37 points or so. Apple shares are just getting hammered this morning. We're down by between 3 and 4.5% 4 and generally across these markets. Let's talk about the speed with which we are watching this market deteriorate. We're red everywhere, essentially, down by 4 5%. We're down over 16%. Dow, at the same time, has fallen about 18%. The stock market is now down 21%. Because we're now down 43%. What in the world is happening on Wall Street? Two-year no yields went from 190 to 166 in the blink of an eye. And the NASDAQ, everything and more has been completely wiped out. It was the worst day on Wall Street since the crash of 1987. From the financial capital of the world, the opening bell is going to ring. 
in uh, five seconds, and to be honest with you, we wish it wouldn't. Traders here working the phone say a lot of their customers are freaked out, waiting to see how low the Dow will go. They're focused on the Dow, not so focused on OPEC. Yes, OPEC did cut production by one and a half million barrels per day. Really, you're seeing just broad-based declines across all of the major technology sectors. Apple's under pressure. Uh, Yahoo down eight and a half percent. Cisco six and a half percent. Research in motion ten percent. And we're not getting the bid one. We're not getting the stop trading, and we see where the where the buyers are. We're just every day they're pounding it. The heightened financial turmoil that we have experienced of late may well lengthen the period of weak economic performance and further increase the risk to growth. Can't look at it after you buy it. It's so horrible. But we've had an eight-day losing streak in the Dow that, in percentage terms, puts it on par, close to the loss suffered in that crash in 1987, close to that percentage loss those two days in 1929. What started in America last year has now spread to every part of the world. We're down 9% today. The Zetradax over in Frankfurt is down by 9%. The Paris market down by 9%. Austria, which was briefly suspended earlier on, in the day is down by nearly 11 percent. This market is as volatile as you'll ever see. Traders saying this is the craziest day they have ever seen in these markets. Veteran traders saying they've never seen anything like it. The movement in oil prices so fast, so fast. Seconds ago until the start of trading at the New York Stock Exchange and stocks are set to kick off lower, a whole lot lower. eBay is down 6.5%, and really you're seeing just broad-based declines across all of the major technology sectors. Apple's under pressure, uh, Yahoo down 8.5%, Cisco 6.5%, research in motion 10%. Like This could be the most serious recession in decades, and that means life, as most Americans know it, is about to change, in some cases dramatically. Okay, so who remembers that crash? or who's heard of it. I don't remember it, <laughs> but uh, at, well, I don't even remember how, how old was I during that time. I don't know. I don't remember it. <laughs> like, I, like, I don't remember living it, uh, but obviously I heard of it. And um, it was a big deal, especially when I was working at the bank, like uh, a lot of, there was a lot of history that we learned about that. And it was a huge, huge, huge deal that time, a uh, very well-known crash. And I mean, if you look deeper into it, you look up videos, you read more about it, you will actually see what an impact it had. And of course, at the banks, everyone was pulling out their money. Like, how would you feel like, sincerely speaking, how would you feel if you went to your investments and you had all this money in stocks and like, it was just going down. You see like your portfolio 20, 30, 40, 50% down. Like, what would you do if you're someone that doesn't understand investing, which is, is, is normal for people that aren't too familiar with it. Obviously there is a panic. How many of you would have probably pulled out? Let me know in the chat. Yeah, I mean, that time was very serious. Like, I will say uh, I've seen moments where people uh, have money and let's say in Canada, we call them mutual uh, or I think in the US, you guys call it the same uh, <laughs> mutual funds. And with mutual funds, of course, there's different types of mutual funds. And um, if let's say it's not going in the customers or your favor, like let's say Daniel opens up a mutual fund and he's in a high risk portfolio because in his mind it's high risk, high return, but then he doesn't really understand how mutual funds work or the investing world. He is just going by what he is being told by family or friends. And let's say his portfolio is down, like he put in $2,000 or 3,000, now it's down to like maybe 500. Daniel would be in a panic wouldn't he? And uh, he'd probably want to take it out. He'd rush to the bank. Do you understand? Like during that time, people were literally rushing to the banks, trying to pull out their money. And the way the banks work, like the banks don't have all this money in the actual like location. They do have a lot because I remember we would go in the safe every time at the end of the night counting the money. There's a lot of money there, but uh, not enough to cover everyone's account like what they have 
that's why with investments, by the way, if you've ever tried pulling out investments like large amounts from the bank, it takes a few days because the bank has to order it in. And then once the bank receives it, then they call you and then you pick up your money from your investment, which is why a lot of people preach about crypto because crypto is so accessible. Like you have it in your crypto account and you could just transfer it to your bank account. You don't need like a middle person. Now with the stock market crash, of course, stocks, what, is, what does a stock market mean? Uh, like what is the stock market? Who wants to write it down or who wants to explain, say it in the chat? What is the stock market? We've spoken about Forex. You know, Forex is for an exchange for a uh, market. Crypto is, of course, digital currency. But what is the stock market? Equities, yeah. Shares of a company. Yes, Michelle same shares yeah so a stock market um basically publicly traded companies which shout out to investview because they're publicly traded so uh, publicly traded companies you can own shares of the company uh so what are some companies that you've invested in or that maybe you know of maybe friends family Apple, Tesla, Facebook, Rogers. <laughs> Are you a Rogers customer, Michelle? <laughs> Home Depot. Wait, Daniel, you're you're you have money in so you put money into that or you're just Tesla. Oh, Michelle, you work for Rogers. Okay, okay. How did that slip my mind? <laughs> of course, you have money in, in Rogers then, of course. Part of the, the plan, you know, the benefits. Yeah, I had money in, a, what is it, in my old workplace as well. Costco. Google. Imagine you had put money into like Amazon before it got so popular. Imagine. So I feel like all these online places really picked up after COVID because everyone was stuck at home. But of course, we can't predict it. But that's why it's good to be educated. Now, for those of you um, that shared your answers, thank you. I love to see the participation. So the stock market is exactly that. So stocks are equities, which is why in the university on the iGenius site, you see it as the equities, equity, equity prime, all that. They use the word equity, equities. They don't have stock, but it's the same thing. It's, it's basically, that's what it is. Now, the purpose of the stock market, of course, um, there, there's two purposes, two roles that the stock market plays. Well, the reason why, you know, it's beneficial. So number one, uh, it helps companies raise capital because obviously you're putting money into their company by buying these shares. And number two, it obviously helps the investors make money. <laughs> and not just that, but it helps, it helps mainly, it helps the investors own a piece of that company. That's really the second purpose. You own it. Whether your money's going up or down, you own a piece, a chunk of that company. Now, you don't need to own the whole thing. And it's similar to like, let's say with crypto, as an example, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is, uh, what's the price of Bitcoin right now? I know it's gone up a lot. Uh, but as an example, let's just say the price of Bitcoin is 40,000. Uh, and I'm talking about American. Okay, perfect. Uh, 39K, it's in US. In Canada, Canadian, obviously, if you use Shake Pay, you see the Canadian price. Uh, but with Bitcoin, as an example, it's... 39 40k but you can still have you can have a piece of bitcoin you don't need to buy the whole thing you don't need to dish out a full 39 or 40k you could put ten dollars into bitcoin ten dollars as little as ten dollars twenty dollars fifty a hundred five hundred it's the same as stocks stocks it has a specific price but you don't need to 
like if, if let's say as an example, I don't know the price of Amazon off the top of my head or, or Google or any of those. Um, I haven't looked at it recently and what the price is now. Um, but let's say as an example, let's say uh, I'll use Home Depot just because that one stood out to me. Let's just say Home Depot is $300. Like you don't, you, you can put in less than that. You don't have to put in the full 300. You know, does that, that make sense? Obviously, the more you put in, the more you make. It's like with Bitcoin, as an example, if you put in a, the full 40K and it doubles, that's a lot of money you're making versus let's say if you just put in $10 or 20 or 50. Now, of course, with the stock market, it's... um. It's interesting when you look at the different markets. So Forex, what would you say? And I I could say it, but I want to hear your your answers and I want to really see the participation. I want to, you know, get interactive here. What would you say are the main differences between Forex crypto and, and the stock market? So if you want to say something about each in the chat, like what's the like What's the difference really, or, or how would you classify them? Which one's higher risk? Which one's lower risk? Which one's more like slow, quick? Like what would you say the main differences are? Because those of you that have been here for some time and that have been on the Champions U calls, you're very familiar with these different markets. They've been covered on these calls. If you've done the education, same thing. But what would you say is the main difference between them? And I'll give you my perspective and my insight, but I want to hear. Nobody? Nobody wants to share? their value and what they have to offer. Forex, you need brokers, crypto, no middle person. Stock, look at as safe crypto Forex scam. <laughs> Wait, Daniel, you think crypto and Forex are a scam? <laughs> I'm playing with you. Forex is purely dealt with currency. So I feel like it's a bit quicker. Stocks can be kind of slow question mark like it has its moments plus the benefits dividends which the other markets don't have stocks is deemed safer side but return is lower than crypto yeah so it, it really does depend so um a lot of people look at stocks as like passive income and a lot of wealthy people invest in stocks now i know there's a lot of conversation when it comes to the stock market of um, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's slow and crypto and Forex is more exciting, but at the end of the day, I really encourage you all to educate yourselves more on the stock market because it is, a, it's still a good market to invest in. There's a reason why a lot of wealthy people invest in the stock market, why a lot of millionaires invest in the stock market. It is a good source of passive income. However, of course, if that's the only thing you're depending on, then yeah, no, you could have multiple streams of income and you can have different types of investments because those of you that look at my stories regularly, if you saw the one when I spoke about being um, a 401k or RRSP millionaire versus like a millionaire with impact, there's a reason why I said that because I was watching something and 401k is what you guys have in the US. Who's in the US here, by the way? I know my Canadians, but who's who, who's American here? Sylvia, Mia, of course. <laughs> um, who else? Just those two? Because in the US, you guys use 401k which essentially is an RRSP here for us Canadians. 
And that's something where it's a retirement savings plan. So you put money aside for retirement. A lot of people, if you, if you, um, look into investing in the topic of finance, you'll hear people say, well, put money aside, put part of your paycheck or put it into like a retirement savings plan. And you put X amount times by X amount of months and years, you're going to have a million dollars by the time you retire. Like anyone heard that before? Drop a one in the chat. Yeah whether it's 401k or RSP, and you see a lot of people in the finance space preach about 401ks. I don't know what it is about finance people on, on social media. I hardly ever see people talk about the RSP. I guess there's not that many Canadians in finance, TikTok or Instagram. I think we got to change that. Uh, but uh, yeah, and so that is a way, but that's typically like the nine to five, fiver five nine to five or way of doing it where they work a nine to five until they're 65 70 years old and obviously they have money into that and then their mind it's like okay perfect I'm gonna have a, a million dollars and I'm gonna use that for my retirement I'm not gonna need anything else I'm gonna travel relax spend time with family that's cool but there's also a few of us out there that don't want to just depend on that. We don't want to wait until we're 65 and 70 to have a million dollars, correct? Who's with me? Drop a two. So that's the thing. Like it, The stock market is a good place to invest in. Not a lot of people talk about it, especially with all of the hype around Forex and crypto, but I do recommend it because it is a good way to get paid passively with dividends. Like Mia brought up the dividends earlier. So people get paid dividends. Um, so when the company is making money, you get paid out. And the thing is, it's a good passive way. Now, of course, the idea is not to just depend on that. You can get into Forex, you can get into crypto, you can have your investments in crypto and, and other things. The idea is to expand your streams of income. Um, but that's really what the main thing is. And like I said, it's, it's just the stock market, I would consider, which many of you that said it is more of like a slower, safe way of investing. It is, but I wouldn't say it's it's uh like guaranteed safe either because you really have to you have to treat it like any other financial market like no financial market really is um safe or like a hundred percent guaranteed because anything can happen especially when you're thinking of how what the term is of your investment because a lot of people are saying that there is going to be a huge market crash like the economy isn't that great right now. If you look at things, I saw an article earlier today. The economy is so bad and it's really affected the real estate market. And you've seen, I don't know how many of you've seen like in your cities and where you're from, people renting out literal closets and charging like $2,000 for such a small space. That's literally a closet. I saw an article earlier today, someone was like renting out half their bed. So <laughs> is it getting that bad? That's in Toronto too. I don't know what's wrong with these Toronto people. <laughs> but um, like literally renting out half their bed. That's how bad the market is when it comes to housing. And the real estate, of course, is very tied into that. But the thing is, you really want to be educated now. There are different types of investments. A lot of people think, oh, investing is so risky. There are different types. And that's why you want to understand what you're getting into, especially when it comes to like mutual funds. I know mutual funds is mainly connected to like the banks and financial institutions. Doesn't mean it's a bad thing. Okay. I know we all like to hate on the banks and the banks aren't nice and they're not profitable. Okay, cool. You know, but there's a reason why multiple multi-millionaires and the 1% still have mutual funds and investments in stocks. It's really, you need to know what to use and how to use it. If you're only depending on the bank and you only have money in the bank, then yeah, absolutely. The bank sucks. 
And in general, the bank sucks. <laughs> I used to work there, so I know. Uh, but you want to take advantage of things too. And so you got to think long-term. The stock market is really good for long-term investing when it comes to uh, having that passive income while you're doing other things. Does that make sense? And the stock market can actually be fun if you actually look into the different companies. Like there are some of your favorite companies out there that you could actually be putting money into, especially the girls. Like the girls, like I feel like stocks, Primarily, the girls thinks it's it. The girls think it's more like the the stock bros or any or like the Wall Street guys or I guess here in Toronto Bay Street guys and you know they're all like snobs and you like you know what I mean. But girls, you can get into the stock market too, and it's actually a lot of fun if you look up your companies that you like. Uh, Lululemon. I don't know if any of you <laughs> shop at Lululemon. I think they sell guy stuff too. Any guys, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, a lot of a lot of companies that you use that you could be putting money into. And again, it's not to say that you have to put in so much money, like hundreds and thousands of dollars, but you can definitely put in some. Um, now, of course, a great way to learn about the stock market is number one, our our university. I I will point out though, there's a reason why. For example, with the iGenius channel with the equities, it's not as active as, let's say, Forex or crypto because the stock market, again, you, you want to be very careful with the moves you're making in the stock market just because it's considered safer doesn't mean that you can be blinded or go into it completely oblivious of what you're doing and of what's going on. And so iGenius, because their uh, parent company is InvestView and InvestView, of course, is publicly traded. So you can buy into their stocks. Um, they're very, very aware of this and they want to make sure that any recommendations they're giving for the equities market, that it's the right recommendations. Now, the cool thing about the stock market is you could actually, it's like a, in Forex, we have our demo accounts. In the stock market, you can do something similar. Like if you're not comfortable putting real money into, into the stock market, you can actually practice with like a paper account. And so it's like a demo. Um, and you're basically, it's, it's just practice. And that's something that's very popular uh, with, with that market. And with the U S I'm not sure what, what, um, Brokers are popular, but I know Wealth Simple is is one that's very very well known and popular. There was one that I heard of before called Weeble. I'm not sure if it's still like I haven't heard much about it, but um, definitely good to look into. Those of you that are in the U.S. again, I don't want to recommend like. You guys know what's good in the U.S. and what's not. In Canada, sometimes things are a bit different, just like crypto. We use different things. Um, like we use something called ShakePay to easily transfer money into crypto, but Americans don't have access to that. And so, yeah, I mean, the thing is with the stock market also, you want to be very careful. Um, there's There are equities and stocks. That's That's good. Some people... For example, like to buy crypto on stock exchanges, like let's say Wealth Simple, but you're not actually owning crypto that way. That's a whole different conversation. So if you think you own crypto because you bought something on Wealth Simple, that's actually false. You don't own anything. Um, but that's a whole different thing. So does anyone have any specific questions though about the stock market? And I welcome you to unmute yourself. It's okay. You're allowed. <laughs> if you want to be social and you want to be interactive, you're more than welcome to. Okay. Uh, you're not going to get in trouble. So who would like to learn more about the stock market though? Like would like to see it more on like Champions U. Because there's so much to get into when it comes to the stock market. I actually really like the stock market, but I fell more in love with crypto, which is why I was do like, I'm more involved in that. But I noticed 
that the stock market is still a good market. And it's the first one that I that I became aware of working where I was working. And there's a lot to learn. And I feel like if you really, really know it, you could take advantage of it and still enjoy the other markets like Forex and crypto. It's like, does anyone have any specific questions though before we wrap this up? Because it's already 7.43. Yes, no, no questions. Okay. I was going to play something else for you guys, but maybe next time. Okay. All right, so when it comes to that, then if you don't have any questions, um, considering the time, I'm not gonna get into like different, uh, different aspects of the stock market. I guess that could be for a separate trading, uh, training. So we can go more in depth because I don't wanna rush that because there's a lot of important things to understand. Like I already, like the two main things which I covered, it's like what the purpose is of the stock market. Um, If you've been scared to enter into the stock market because you feel like you're going to lose money, again, it's the same thing. Like in crypto, you could literally put 10, 10 bucks into crypto and experience it with the stock market. The only thing is crypto, you can't do any demos or any like fake accounts. It's your real money. That's the benefit of Forex. And yeah, just to clarify the difference between the three, Forex is definitely more fast paced. I consider Forex the highest risk of all three uh, because you could definitely blow and lose all your money in literally seconds. Whereas with crypto, you can have, let's say a hundred dollars in there, it'll go down to like maybe, as an example, maybe $40. But it's not something where like if it hits a stop loss or it goes completely down, like you'll lose everything that you have there. Um, I, I like to say crypto is like the baby of Forex and stocks. It's in between. Forex is the highest risk market. I would consider stocks more on like the safer side. And crypto is definitely in between because crypto can be slower than Forex, but there's still a lot of risk with crypto. Does that make sense? Yeah, Forex is definitely higher risk. And for people that don't understand it, especially, it'll be a lot easier for them to lose money. Someone could completely not understand stocks or crypto. They just put 20 bucks in there. They're good. <laughs> like they don't need to know anything. They'll just put money in. And I mean, hey, it's always good to do your research, too, because you don't want to put money into like like meme coins or scam coins or anything like someone doesn't want to put money blindly into that. But I'm just saying in terms of like a quicker impact, Forex is definitely the one if you're not careful with how quick it moves, depending. Right. I, I, let me correct myself. When it comes to specific uh, currency pairs, they move very slow. I remember, uh, let's say if you do like a specific currency pair, you're waiting for it to hit, take profit. It could take till the next day. Certain currency pairs. However, when it comes to like gold and others that many of you are familiar with, it will literally, you could literally look at the screen and look back at your account and you could be done <laughs> in literal seconds. Have been to anyone before? Raise your hand. Yeah, to me, definitely. I'm raising two hands because it happened to me multiple times <laughs> at the beginning. So that's what I mean. Like it's higher risk in that way because it's very, it's 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 the quicker pace thing. Uh, with crypto, of course, it's an in between. It's definitely the baby. Um, there is a lot of risk involved if you don't know what you're doing and if you're putting money into coins that you don't understand. However, stocks is definitely more of a long term game. 
stocks is a hundred percent a long-term gain very good when it comes to getting paid out passively of course you still have to understand it you still have to learn it and um so i definitely encourage you if you haven't looked at that section when it comes to the university definitely take a look or market pro take a look at it learn about the crash of 2008 if you're not too familiar with it i definitely recommend you as an assignment to learn about it because it's very important and it's a very historical moment in you know that world of finance and they are saying uh, you know I, i've been hearing this for like over a year that's gonna there's gonna be a huge market crash like the economy is not good right now and you can see the effects of in interest rates and in housing real estate even the price of cars right now, apparently it's a horrible time to buy cars. Like they are just overpriced. Um, and of course, if you're looking to rent a place or even buy a home, it's not the best. So there's a lot of things going on. But in terms of like a massive, massive crash like 2008, there hasn't really been that much panic like that. But they are saying, and what I mean by they, I'm talking about people that I watch in in the stock market space or in the financial space. Uh, they are saying that there's going to be a huge crash. First, they said there was going to be a massive crash at the end of October, or beginning of November. But we're still waiting. So I definitely recommend, you know, anything can happen, but you want to prepare yourselves, educate yourselves. Um, and that's just how the markets are. And it's like a roller coaster, but it's a fun ride because there's a lot of ups and downs, upside downs, turns and all that. Uh, but it's a fun ride if you understand. And especially, you know, where you're going at the end of the day, doesn't matter how many ups or downs there are in a roller coaster, how many spins, how many turns. You still end up at your final destination when you get off the ride. Right. Who likes roller coasters? Perfect. So you understand. I love roller coasters, by the way. Um, Behemoth. <laughs> what was the what's the other one? The one after Behemoth, the one that's a ninety degree drop. Yeah, that one. I went on that one. I loved it. <laughs> uh, yeah. I'm a big fan of roller coasters, by the way, FYI, not to go off topic, but I guess in the topic of the financial markets, because it can definitely be a roller coaster, an emotional roller coaster uh, and a financial one. <laughs> um, I love them. And any roller coaster. Well, I don't want to say any, uh, but if you're in Toronto, you know, Wonderland, I've been on all of them. Minus, I think, the newest one, because I haven't been to Wonderland in, like, forever. Leviathan was the last one I went on. Yeah, Yukon Striker. I, see, the last time I went to Wonderland, that ride didn't exist. So I haven't been since. But, yeah, who knows? Maybe Toronto, you know, you could have a some outing there sometime next year. <laughs> we'll see. But that being said, um, any questions you have specifically about the stock market, please feel free to drop it in the chat. I really want to see more conversation and champions you about the different markets, not just people dropping profits, even though that's good to see people's journeys. I really want to build a culture in there of people sharing things that are going on in the news or like different important things happening in the different markets. Because if we are learning about these topics and we are learning about the markets, you can't really say you're an investor or a trader if you don't even know what's going on in the markets. You're just blindly just copying and pasting or you're just doing education. Like to be a real crypto person, you need to know what's going on in the crypto space. You can't just know how to copy and paste alerts or how to use alerts. You know, like be aware of what's happening in the stock market space, in the finance space, in the crypto space, in the foreign exchange and world economics, whatever. Like so 
those of you that don't like economics, don't worry. Like I'm not saying hey, this has to be an economics university class or anything, but I'm saying if you come across things that you find interesting, share them in there, share them in there. Um, it's good to learn from each other, feed off each other. Some of you might be more interested in stocks. Some of you might be more interested in crypto and that's totally fine. I would love to have conversations in there about what's going on in different spaces also so you guys can be educated but also it helps you because when you go out and about and let's say you come across somebody else especially those of you like you know in the business side of things if you come across other people that are having conversations about the stock market crypto you'll know how to carry those conversations and that's going to really be beneficial and that's going to help you so um that being said, I would love to see more of that. I've mentioned it before, but I, I would really, really like to see more of it. You know, results are great. Uh, big shout out to Atilia. She's not on here. Obviously, she's European time, but, you know, her energy in there is great, too. Uh, but definitely would love to see more of you share stuff that you come across, whether it's on Instagram, Twitter, just share. And I'll be doing the same. And like that, we can all educate each other and and bounce ideas off each other and have conversations because at the end of the day that's you know conversation is a, a key part of networking and you can't ne network unless you know how to have and carry conversations so that being said uh that's it for today's call and uh i'll be seeing you in the chats bye